we mustn't make influences about psychedelic therapies by what we know about the recreational use of the drugs. Mm. It's almost irrelevant. Um, yeah. So if if people make inferences about MDMA therapy based on what they know about ravers taking ecstasy, then mm -hmm. they're going to be very misinformed. Um, mm. You know, a, a good analogy is um, imagine if there was some weird, peculiar recreational pursuit whereby people like to take out their appendix with a pair of rusty scissors on the cris on, on the on the kitchen table. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't then look at that bizarre practice and say, goodness me, it's absolutely unethical and controversial that doctors should do appendix operations in hospitals. You know, it, mm. it doesn't bear any relevance. So you're quite right. The general public is irrationally fearful because they don't understand that MDMA therapy is a medical procedure. And, um, and most people don't take MDMA in that way when they take it recreationally. Now, some do. Some people take MDMA very sensibly, but a, a great many people don't. And so they don't understand that there is a difference. And so you're quite right. People need to be re-educated on the way that these drugs can be used clinically. And we can learn a lot from recreational use um, and certainly from underground therapy use. But the general public is understandably fearful because they don't they don't really understand the nature of of clinical MDMA therapy. Um, and, mm. and when MDMA therapy is used in a clinical setting, um, we can control and manage and reduce the harms that may be associated with recreational use. So people ought not be fearful. They ought be they ought to be curious and open minded about this, the potential for therapy with psychedelics. Because all of the psychedelics can be taken very safely. So that's that bit. And your next question was, how does it work in the brain? So yeah. MDMA is a very remarkable substance, um, quite unique within pharmacology. It works on a number of different receptors. And at each of the different receptors, it has an effect. Um, and in totality, when these effects are added up, it's the perfect drug for psychotherapy. So... At the level of the serotonin 1A, 1B receptors, it increases positive mood, reduces anxiety and depression, and gives the person a sense of positive well-being. This is the kind of ecstasy effects. So that's a very beneficial, positive experience to have in therapy with a patient who has a history of trauma and has spent most of their life in a sense of fear and low mood and anxiety. So that's one place it works. It also works at the serotonin 2A receptors. And these are the receptors where the classical psychedelics like LSD and psilocybin work. So it's not such an intensive classical, an intense psychological experience as LSD and psilocybin um, MDMA. But it does have some degree of the mild psychedelic effects, which within therapy uh, means it, it, it can work to open new possibilities in terms of creativity and in terms of thinking outside the box and um, open new ways of looking at old problems. So that's at the two A's receptors. It works on the drug, on the neurotransmitter dopamine. Dopamine is the kind of amphetamine speeded up part of it. And this is where it motivates the patient to engage in therapy. So it's the speeds them up. It can make them more engaged. Whilst paradoxically mm. working on the um, alpha uh, two two a alpha adrenal receptors, which have a relaxation effect, so it's both speeding them up by the dopamine receptors and slowing them down by the alpha two receptors. Um, so you're in this peculiar sense of both speeded up and slowed down at the same time, and this puts the person into the optimal arousal zone for psychotherapy. So. People with trauma symptoms are often what we call hypervigilant. They're edgy and uh, on edge and anxious. So the alpha-2 effect calms that down. And people, I don't know if you've taken ecstasy, but it, it does have this peculiar quality of feeling speeded up and slowed down at the same time. Um, but therapeutically, mm. it has a very positive effect via a hormone called oxytocin. It increases the secretion of oxytocin from the brain. And oxytocin is a hormone that's secreted from the brains of breastfeeding mothers and it's a hormone that engenders a sense of attachment and bonding 
And that has a very positive effect in augmenting the quality of the therapeutic relationship between the patient and the therapist. So when you add up all of these different effects at all of those different receptors, what you get is a drug that allows a person to be with and reflect upon painful traumatic memories that normally they want to avoid. So if you look at PTSD, for example, you have people in their 30s, 40s, 50s who are, have led this miserable life of disability because of this thing that happened to them when they were 10 years old. And they've carried it all through their life and they've become addicted to alcohol and they've become addicted to heroin and they've self-harmed and they've been sectioned to hospital and they've had all of these different medications. And it all comes down to the fact that they will not and cannot think about and talk about that thing that happened to them that night when they were 10 years old. And so there's mm -hmm. a huge avoidance about doing the psychotherapy. What MDMA does is it puts them into this place psychologically through its pharmacological effects where they can be with it. They can actually say, do you know what? I can talk about that night. I can talk about it in great detail for a great deal of hours. I can do this psychotherapy work. So it has this ability to provide this this um, kind of uh, proof vest or lifesaver jacket that allows you to do do the trauma work. So that's really what's happening both physically and psychologically with MDMA.